Good morning, everyone. Mike Chizik here for TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series. Just out of a very busy month of racing, had uh, back to back to back to back weekends of racing, starting in Daytona and ending in Thunder Hill, California. I saw so many people the last few weeks. Uh, watched some great racing. Uh, handed out some really big trophies. So, to all those that uh, raced and uh, and won, congratulations! And uh, we look forward to seeing you further in the year uh, as 2019 unfolds. So one of the items that uh, comes to mind as I think back to all the racing we did this past month is uh, car safety. Um, we had a couple cars lost to accidents and this isn't necessarily uh, car to car. This is just a, a mechanical failure and uh, big fast car meets slow immovable object as a wall and the end result is cars no good. So we get to look at these incidents and study them. Um, when cars back to the paddock, you know, we'll send someone out there and we'll take pictures and we document stuff because we want to know how do our safety rules hold up under real world incidents. Um, you know, what, is the cage design good? Is it sound? Where could there be improvements? And so at Charlotte's, we had uh, a couple cars that uh, got wrecked, no good. Uh, the track can be hard on cars and the safer barrier is very unforgiving. And we are asking a lot of our old street cars, you know, they were never meant to do this. They were meant to transport you to back and forth to work or take, you know, the kids to daycare or something of that nature. And, you know, we can strip them out and paint them and go race them at high speeds for a long period of time. Um, so, you know, these accidents hard on a car um, by and large what we found is we like how safe the cars are all of the drivers walked away from Charlotte they're okay um, but there are some things that we're looking at improving um, there are a number of I would say number there's a bar or two that we say hey this is optional it's probably a good idea but you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Um, and in those accidents at Charlotte, we had some that had that optional bar in there and some that did not. The ones that had it fared better in the accidents. The driver was much more protected um, than the ones that did not. And in looking at it and, and starting to chat amongst the tech people on the board, we think that in the future here, the near future, um, we're probably those optional bars are probably going to become mandatory with the cage now don't freak out and drop your laptop and go running and say you know I now they're changing the rules we got to go change the cage nothing's gonna happen this year cage design and construction is a pretty involved process this is the beginning of your build once you drag that car into your shop and you gut all the carpet and seats and stereo out of it and you're starting from scratch the cage is the first thing everything else is built on that so we won't make changes like that lightly. When we finally decide exactly what extra bar or what optional bar is now going to become mandatory, this will be announced well in advance and you'll have at least a year to prepare for it. So your current build, you can continue to run it. Um, maybe it wears out, maybe you get tired of it, whatever it may be. Hopefully you don't get in an accident and wreck the car, but at some point that car gets retired and you have a new car and as you're building that new car you know that in the future this rule is going to be there and so you put that extra bar in in the construction stage when it's easy to do it's no problem and so now once the rule is in effect your new car has already been built to that spec you're good to go so that's what the plan will be and i will probably make those announcements in this this falls uh, bccr for 2020 and that lets you know in advance in 2021 or 2022, whatever we decide, when these cage changes will come about. Um, but you know, just following up to let you know that you know we are paying attention to those incidents at, at the racetracks, and we decide very cautiously and carefully what changes are for the betterment of the club. Anyway, um, important date coming up, May 13th. That's next week, specifically. It's next Monday. Uh, that date is the payment deadline for entry fees to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway event. 
Um, back in November at midnight, you guys paid $700 deposits on that. The balance is due on May 13th. Now, there is a 70 plus car waiting list for Indy. And there are a lot of people on that list that are really, really hoping the uh, 100 cars that got in fail to make that last payment because they want you off the list and they want your spot. I don't think you want to lose your spot. So please make sure that you get those fees in by midnight, May 13th. Uh, if you do not, you risk getting your deposit refunded to you, losing your spot, and the next guy on the wait list gets moved in. We've already moved four or five people off the wait list into Indy. Those are from people that had to cancel already. They emailed us and said, hey, I can't make it. I got surgery, I've got family vacation, whatever it may be. Um, and we've taken care of those changes. Um, but that next guy on the list is sure hoping someone doesn't pay. So May 13th, midnight, make sure those payments are in. Want to make sure that uh, everybody gets there and uh, gets a chance to experience Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So if you any questions about that, please email me, info at champco.org. Uh, and for that matter, if you have any questions or comments about anything out there on your mind, please let, let me know. That's what I'm doing. I'm here to answer your questions and make your club racing experience better. So guys, two weeks until Watkins Glen, and that's another big sold out one. If your cars aren't ready, you're running out of time. Got any questions about that, let us know. Otherwise, get back to the shop, get those cars fixed, ready to go, and we'll see you at the track. Thanks. Bye.